There is literally no other place in the United States where a group like this would hang out in weather like this to hear the declaration read and the heroes of America's democracy. And worst of all, a Harvard professor address you late in the evening. But I'm grateful you're here. We, had, uh, we thought we'd gotten this gift from the Koch brothers. They promised to give us the weather as their donation for this event today. And I guess we should have been a little bit more suspicious. Okay, so we hold these truths to be self-evident. The man who penned that declaration was a genius. My kind of genius, the sort of genius who writes things which when you read it, you get the genius in them. Today, we have other kinds of geniuses, geniuses who write things like E equals MC2, right? That genius, they say that's genius, but it doesn't quite pull in the same way as the words of Jefferson. But there is one thing that that genius, Albert Einstein, is said to have said. What he said was, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again and again, but expecting something different to happen. Now, I love that quote, that is genius. I learned then that Albert Einstein didn't actually write that quote, which makes me very sad because it would be the one genius thing that Einstein said that I actually understood. But here it is. Whether by Einstein or not, there is genius in that story. And it reminds me of where we are in American politics right now. Because we've entered the happy time of American politics. You know, every four years, for about a year, we believe something is possible. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you listen and you believe. They tell you stories about how the debt will be addressed or how student debt will be addressed, or we will have climate change legislation, or health care reform that makes it so everyone can afford it, or we will have an immigration policy, or finally address the injustice of inequality. We will have a system of justice that addresses black lives in America. They tell us these stories, and for a brief, happy time, we believe it. And we imagine that if we can elect, just elect our Superman or Superwoman, black or white, Latino or not, if we can elect our Superman and send our Superman to Washington, those dreams will come true. Every four years we believe this. We go through this moment, this happy moment. But we hold these truths to be self-evident that that dream is a fantasy in American politics right now. Because what we know is that Washington is Krypton. Remember, Superman loses his power when he is on Krypton. So we elect Superman and we send Superman to Washington, but Washington is Krypton and he loses all his power or her power. It doesn't matter regardless when they go there they lose their power because of the fundamental difference between politics here and politics there. Here, the people rule. There, the money rules. And so when we elect our supermen and send them to that place, the money says, we have the kryptonite superman. You can't do anything. And that's our insanity, because each time we go through this cycle of belief, we forget the reality that once this man or woman toes up to do something, nothing, nothing can happen. Nothing can happen until we fix the system. Now, we in the Democratic Party, we like to talk about this in a particular way. Republicans talk about it in a different way. Republicans talk about the corruption of crony capitalism. We, Democrats, we talk about this in the way my senator talks about it. We say the system is rigged. The system is rigged, which is why every time we elect someone, they go down there. They can't achieve what they say they can achieve because the system is rigged. And what we know, the truth that we find self-evident is that until we can unrig the rig system, there is no hope for reform. On the right or the left, it's not a Republican Democrat point. There's no hope for reform. Until we can unrig the rigged 
system. Now, the amazing thing about this presidential race, in large part because of the work many of you been, have been doing for the New Hampshire Rebellion, is that finally the presidential candidates are talking about this issue. People have been following the round for the New Hampshire Rebellion, asking these questions again and again, and finally the candidates are talking about it. They're acknowledging the issue, which you would think in a world where the Wall Street Journal reports that polls say this is the number one issue in America, this issue, the issue we want our politicians to talk about, you would think it wouldn't be surprising that they would talk about the issue. But it is surprising. And it is surprising because the truth is they're embarrassed about this issue and they won't want to talk about it. And so that's our job. Our job is to find a way to make them talk about it. And we have been succeeding. Candidates, almost every credible candidate except one, on the Republican Democratic side, has acknowledged the incredible injustice in the Supreme Court's decision in Citizens United. And candidate after candidate are talking about how they're going to push to get an amendment to the Constitution to deal with the incredible injustice of Citizens United. And that is enormous progress. But here's the problem. When they talk about this issue, they talk about this issue as one among 10. We've got all these different things we're gonna do. And on this list of all these things we will do is this, we will change the corruption and the way Washington works. We will do everything and we will do this. But here is the truth. Here is the truth, which we hold as self-evident, that all of the other things they're talking about that they want to do, they will not do until they address this issue first. So our job our job has got to be to find a way to get them to give us a plan. Remember the ad that said, show me the beef? We've got to say, show me the plan. Show me the plan for how you will make this issue the number one issue, the first thing you deal with when you show up in Washington in 2017. The first thing you will rally the country and the Congress to. Because what we know, the truth that we hold as so obvious, self-evident. What we know is that we will not see progress anywhere until we get them to do that. Now, the fact is not a single candidate for president has done that yet. Even the man I love so much, that man right there, Bernie. You've heard of Bernie, right? Anybody hear of Bernie yet? Even, even Bernie, when he announced, of course, was one of the few candidates, and this is incredibly important to talk about the need to change the way we fund elections. But he said, in the long run, we will change the way we fund elections. And that made me want to say, but Bernie, what are you gonna be doing in the short run? Because in the short run, nothing gets done until you do what you wanna do in the long run. In the long run, we're all gonna be dead. Well, not all of us. We'll be gone and we will have left for them a government and a nation and a series of problems that they cannot begin to address because we have not solved the problem on our time, the problem that we caused on our time. So this has got to be our cause to make this the first issue they talk about and to give us the plan for how they will get it addressed. Now that sentence, we hold these truths to be self-evident is followed by a sentence which many people find hard to credit. Indeed, in the reading of the Declaration of Independence, it had to be amended a little bit. That sentence is followed by, all men are created equal. When you think about that sentence, when it was uttered, you think, what the heck could that have meant, right? There was one state in the nation where blacks were free in 1776, one state. And the rest of the country, Slavery was still enforced. It was practiced in the South, but it was enforced throughout the country. Women 
not only could not vote, they could not own property independent of their husband. In that context, under the words, all men are free, makes you kind of think, well, geez, maybe they had politicians back then too, because it sounds so deeply implausible, but I am a deep believer in the truth of what the Declaration said. The truth. And that truth was uttered most powerfully by Dr. Martin Luther King 50 years ago, June 6, when he spoke at Lincoln University. And Dr. King said, America is a dream, a dream not yet realized. And that dream is captured in the sublime words, all men are created equal. But what he meant by that sublime dream was we work through time over time to deliver the equality that that ideal speaks of. And over the 239 years since those words were written, we have made progress, slow progress, not complete progress, but we have made extraordinary progress in, in achieving equality where there wasn't before. We're not finished with racial equality or sex equality. And we've just celebrated the first true rounds of equality based on equality regardless of whom you happen to love. Those equalities we should be proud of. But when we look back and think of the framers as oblivious because they didn't understand race equality or sex equality, we should realize that if they looked at us they would think of us as oblivious too. Because the one equality they cared about, we have allowed to die in the United States. The equality of citizens. That man, John James Madison, when he explained the meaning of the Constitution a dozen years after Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence, he said we would have a government that would be, quote, dependent on the people alone. And then to make sure nobody was unclear about what that meant, he went on to say, by the people, I mean not the rich more than the poor. Not the rich more than the poor. His conception of equality was citizen equality. His conception was of a system where we would not divide the nation on the basis of one's wealth. But that conception of equality, we have lost. We have lost because we have allowed a system for funding campaigns to develop, which does precisely give more power to the rich than to the poor. This single equality that they gave us, we have allowed to die, the equality of equal citizens. And that is the inequality that got Granny D into this fight. When you read her tell the story of why she took this up, she described a time, she said, where as an ordinary citizen, she felt she could talk to her representatives and feel like they cared about what she said. And then she described how that changed. And they no longer cared about what she said because they were only caring about who would be helping them to fund their campaigns. And when she felt that, she felt she had no longer had the standing of an equal citizen and she wanted to fight to get it back, and she suffered in that fight more than any of us have suffered in the fight since. Now, most people don't even have the sense of equality that she felt she had lost. Most people feel like this government cares not at all about them. They don't even have this sense of imagining a democracy, which could be, as Madison said, not for the rich more than the poor. They don't feel that. They don't live that, but we have to give it back to them. And this is where you are so incredibly important. It is in your power to do this. It is in your power to make this issue the central issue. It is in your power to make it possible again to think not just about an independence, a declaration of independence to achieve equality 239 years ago but to imagine it happening again here because of what you do, what you've done already by making this issue salient is incredibly important. But what we need now is to imagine how we can make this not just 
something they're willing to acknowledge, but something they know they have to give us a plan for. You can do it, and we must, because of those who've taught us what this could be. In honor of Granny D, in honor of Doug Hughes, in honor of everyone who has fought to make this issue as important as it is, please carry this declaration forward, this declaration of independence in our government again. And I'm going to take her home and do something <laughs> appropriate now. So thank you. Thank you very much. Troublemaker as always. <laughs>